Hello and welcome to today's live coaching call and community conversation. Today we are going to be talking about why so many women are struggling with either adapting to a 20 hour fasting window or sticking to a 20 hour fasting window. So I will take the first uh, 15 minutes or so to coach on this topic, and then we'll open up the floor for discussion and answer some questions and comments. Uh, so make sure that you are posting those in the comment section, whether you're on YouTube or on Facebook, and I will address those as soon as I'm done with my coaching conversation with you guys here today. I just like to take a couple seconds on the front end to introduce myself. My name is Diane Parham. I'm the creator of the online course and community, the intermittent fasting for today's aging woman, as well as the midlife mindset shift course. And inside both of those courses and communities, we do work a lot on the mindset shifts that we need to make as women in today's world as aging women and how it is we really can create a life where we can look and feel our best and do that in our most authentic way. Our next course is starting on September the 3rd. Registration will close on the 2nd. You can find information in the description box and I will post those in the comment section in just a little bit as well if you'd like to get on our email list. Um, I am super excited about today's conversation. It is coming from the standpoint of mind set shifts. So if you tuned in today, hoping that I was going to give you some macro guidelines to follow or some nutrition advice, uh, today might not be your day. We're going straight mindset today. So make sure you have your notebooks. If you're a regular viewer here, this is a great opportunity to take some notes on today's coaching and how you can immediately implement, implement some of the things we talk about today in your everyday life. Please hit that you, uh, YouTube subscribe button. We are really close to 100,000 subscribers. I'm hoping to get there by the end of the month, my little personal goal. So if you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button. And then if you are joining us on Facebook, make sure you're following along as well. You guys are saying that you're missing these lives and not getting notifications. So take that extra step to set yourself up to receive notifications as well. Okay, so let's get started on today's conversation. So many women are truly struggling with the concept of going 20 hours a day with not doing anything, right? Not doing anything that's going to interrupt our chemical makeup or our hormone, hormonal makeup and just letting our body do what we need it to do. Very rarely as women, and everything that I share with you guys here today is because I am a woman too who has struggled through the same things. What we never really question is, why do we need to eat all day? Like, why are we listening to this advice that is clearly not serving us? And it's not serving us from a hormonal and chemical reaction place with our body, which we as women should be so intimate with that we can really touch, touch, um, trust our intuition and make informed decisions for ourselves. But there's so much information out there and there is so much uh, uh, that is being sold to us that we don't question anything because we're coming from this really vulnerable and scared and untrusting place in the thoughts that we have and the relationship we have with our body. So we're going to talk about that very specifically today. So the reasons I believe women are struggling with a 20-hour fast, whether it's Deciding that they want to do that and just trusting it or using a 20 hour fast as a quick fix diet approach and not really being able to establish it as a lifestyle. Here are my thoughts about this and my feelings as a woman myself and as a coach who talks to women every single day. And these are always the thought blocks that women are having about really creating a life where they can look and feel their best. Number one, nutrition is categorized as either good or bad. Very healthy foods, very one ingredient from the ground foods are often put in a category of bad food for us by someone who's trying to sell an agenda because it worked for them or because some scientific study was done. And then what we do is we confuse our brain and we start categor categorizing food as good or bad. Here's where we get into trouble. We then use good as how we choose nutrition when we're feeling bad and we want to feel better. So it's thoughts that come in from that lead us to in a feeling, an emotional state. And then we tend to use food to make us feel good in a moment. 
and then feel not so happy with ourselves in the long run, right? So anytime, and I've said this before, and I don't know why this is so confusing to people, but one ingredient foods should never be categorized as bad. We talk about vegetables as one ingredient foods. You can talk about protein sources as one ingredient foods. You can talk about fat sources as one ingredient foods, meaning you don't have to decipher through an ingredients label and try to determine if what someone else put in that food is going to work for your body or not work for your body. It's just a food in its most natural state. It's the food. It's the ingredient. Those should always be foods that we reach for and don't question unless you're that person that just have determined that some foods don't work for you. I know there's people who can't eat tomatoes. I know there's people who can't eat potatoes. I know that there's people who can't eat certain one ingredient foods. And that's your job as the person to figure that out for you. But in general, food should not be good or bad. Food should either work for you and help you get what it is you say you want out of your life or food can be determined as not serving you and leading you down a path where you emotionally and mentally are not happy with the end result of those decisions that you're making. So think about that. How do you classify nutrition? And we really got to get away from this, but I eat clean, but I eat healthy. No one can de define or determine what clean or healthy is except your body when you decide to put something in it and how it responds or reacts to that. So think about that today and this week. How are you describing food in your life and what categories are you placing them in? Maybe because of a situation you have going on in your life that shouldn't be resolved by food. The second thing is our thoughts about our weight. So a lot of people are struggling struggling with the 20-hour fast because they come into this lifestyle thinking or they come into even the courses that I teach online thinking, I don't want my blood sugar to get into a place where I'm going to get sicker or I want my memory to come back or I want to be active and healthy for my grandkids down the road, or I want to travel. And so we think about along those lines, we say like the politically, politically correct thing. And then we're really bummed out that you only lost three pounds or you're not losing as much weight as you think you should. Or you're not losing as much weight as the woman who just posted something about sh the success she feels like she's having. And so we often get confused, right? Because we think we should be losing weight but we forget that our body is going to decide that with time and consistency and you putting things in your body that your body can chemically and hormonally respond to in a positive way. So we have to get rid of this idea that there's a certain amount of weight we're supposed to lose or our body is supposed to be a certain weight in order for us to be whatever it is we say that we want for ourselves. And we really need to start focusing on, am I healthy and am I happy? Because if you're healthy and you're happy, you're probably making really good decisions that are going to allow this to be really fun for you. Or if you're not happy, then you're probably going to be focusing on all of those metrics outside of health, and you're going to determine those as whether you're being successful or unsuccessful. So we need to get really re realistic about our weight. The other thing that I teach in my courses, and I ask you to really think about doing is that is putting the scale away. Like the scale does not determine success or failure. The scale does not determine whether you're happy or unhappy. Oftentimes it will make you feel unhappy. The scale does not determine whether you're a good person or a bad person. Like the scale is irrelevant. And the number that shows up when you step on it has nothing to do with you as the amazing woman that you are today. So if weight is a thing that doesn't serve you, I promise you putting the scale away is going to help you understand why it is you're struggling with the 20 hour fast and will help you get rid of that struggle so you can thrive here. Unresolved emotional connection to food is a huge reason why so many women are struggling with a 20 hour fast because we're taking the problem away. If you're fasting for 20 hours and you have unresolved food connections to you and how you feel and how you manage your life, then this is daunting. If you have resolved some of the past food issues that you've had or how you use food in your life, oftentimes in, uncon in unconscious ways, how you justify your food choices, how you punish yourself with food choices, how you reward yourself with food choices, how you deny yourself food, hoping you're going to lose weight, like all the things. If you're not resolving those issues, this is going to seem 
like torture for you because we're taking the problem out of the equation and it's forcing you to deal with it. And if you're not seeing that and you're not making that connection, this is going to be absolute emotional and mental torture for you. If you're making the connection between taking the problem away and all the things that you've done in the past that didn't serve you, you will have every opportunity to heal your body on an emotional level, on a mental level, and on a physical level. And that's what we shoot for here in this community. I don't want a bunch of women running around in size six skinny jeans who are a hot mess mentally and emotionally. We want women showing up as their most authentic self in all three areas of life that we should really be striving for our health, emotionally, mentally, and physically. And I promise you, if you get these things resolved, this becomes the best place for you to show up for yourself. It will become the best place for you to show up for yourself. But we have to be honest about our unresolved emotional connection to food. The other one, the other big reason why women are struggling with the 20-hour fast is body image. We often have this body image issue that's not realistic. And I was sharing with someone on a console call I had this morning, and I heard this this comment today uh, when I was doing my little Peloton workout was, Uh, if the grass is greener in your neighbor's yard, it could be fake, right? So we, we know that saying the grass is always greener, right? But are we really looking through the right lens when we're making judgments about ourselves? And are those realistic? What were you born with? What was your body like growing up? What kind of, um, What kind of uh, clothes did you wear when you were younger when we weren't manipulating things in our body? Who are you looking at for guidance? Are they showing up as a real version of themselves or are they telling you only what you need to hear, right? Everyone is imperfect in some way, shape, or form, but we tend to look at ourselves with the expectation that we are supposed to show up perfect and we don't even know why. We don't even know what perfect is supposed to be in today's world. So the 20-hour fast will really help you with unresolved body image issues as well and help you become more realistic because it puts the forefront of what you're doing on the health side and the aesthetic come with time and consistency. When we wake up looking and feeling our best, when we have energy, when we're not emotionally beat down by food choices that maybe we're not telling ourselves the truth about, you want to just be better. And when you make better choices and you have more energy and you feel optimistic about your life moving forward, the body image issues tend to resolve themselves because you will see yourself, you will judge yourself, and you will talk to yourself in the conversations you have in your own mind in a much more realistic way, a much more positive and loving way. And then you start to love the body that you have been given. And we, when we stop striving for a body that's not even realistic to ourselves. And then the last reason why women are struggling with the 20 hour fast is we don't trust our own body. You can go 20 hours without putting anything in your mouth. And I promise you, your body will love you. And when your body loves you, your body will thank you. The way our body thanks us in a very like nonverbal way is by doing the things we hope it will do, right? Getting us through the day, uh, making our legs work for us and our arms work for us and have our memory be functioning the way we want it to, having energy, being optimistic. Like our body is designed to be happy and healthy and we get in the way. Start to build a loving and trusting relationship with your body. And I promise you, your body will pay you back with a loving and trusting relationship. We have done so many drastic things with our own body. We have denied it things. We have not nourished it well. We have beat it into the ground, into the gym. We have, for a lot of us, I had my little season as well where we're taking supplements in hope that that's going to be the thing that's going to change and it hasn't been safe for us. Like we've done a lot of really bad things relationship wise with our body and we have to gain the trust back for a lot of women. 
there's very broken relationships between the dialogue that's going on in the in your head and the expectations and disappointment you have in your body. If you start to build a loving and trusting relationship with your body, this again will become magical for you. Sitting in a place of emptiness and a place of confidence and a place of trust and a place of energy and in a place of empowerment is the best place for us women to live, but we are afraid of it because of these things right here. Nothing bad has ever happened to someone who is experiencing hunger when food is plentiful. You are not going to starve yourself. You are going to allow your body the opportunity to focus inward, fix all the things that you're complaining about and so disappointed about in your own body, and it's going to take care of them for you. Because when you have that kind of trusting relationship, it's a yin and a yang. It's a give and a take, and it's going to be reciprocal. So give to your body what it needs, and it's not, for a lot of us, it needs this little break right? An opportunity to fix itself, an opportunity to go in and eat away at all the problems that it's having to be burdened with carrying around. Let your body have the opportunity to take care of its own burdens. And I promise, I said promise probably a hundred times in this coaching call, but I'm promising you, trust me, it will get so easy and it'll be so much fun and you will be so happy and so excited about your fantastic body and the amazingness that it was designed to create for us. Let your body do its job, build that trusting relationship. And I promise you this will go away and you will be totally amazed that this is just a lifestyle that you can lean into with ease and it will be easy for you to make decisions about yourself because you're going to listen to the conversation your body's having with you instead of you just constantly demanding what your body has to listen to. Trust the process, my friends. Um, this is the best thing that so many women are doing in this, this lifestyle that we're all living in this season here from probably 40 to 90, right? Anyone can benefit from this lifestyle if you lean into it from this standpoint. Why am I putting food in these two categories when it should be there to nourish my body? Why am I obsessed about something that I have no connection to or no realistic idea of why I'm shooting for that? Why is hungry a bad thing? Why is that sensation a bad thing when I have food at my disposal and I get to choose when I feed? Uh, put nutrition in my body so that I can have the best functioning body ever. Get a handle on unresolved emotional connections to food. If something happened in your past that's unresolved, that's causing you to not take care of yourself today, why are you letting the past rob you of your present and your future? That's a very serious question you need to ask yourself. Why are you striving for a body that maybe you were not granted from birth? We all have imperfections, right? You need to just be happy with what, you're, what you've been giving and work with that the best possible way that's healthy for you and what you're asking of your body. And then build a trusting relationship with yourself. Your body deserves it. You deserve it. Your family deserves it. Your mindset deserves it. Everything in your life deserves you having this as a trusting relationship and it will spill over into every other relationship you have in your life because that's just the way you operate. If you're a woman who feels like you're struggling, you can't wrap your head around it, I, I strongly recommend and encourage you to jump into our September 3rd class. I talk about a lot of this in there and why you're thinking the things you're thinking and why you're making the decisions you're making and why can't you just trust the process. This is very, very simple to do. It's not extreme. We do it in within a 24-hour window and you nourish your body with fuel that your body needs to get you through your next fast. It's absolutely fascinating. So jump in with us. Hopefully we'll have some of our uh, August course members in the comment section. I'll make sure that I read their comments as well so you can get some encouragement that this is in fact what we do and the results that you can get for yourself uh, moving forward in your future. The result of where we are today as aging women is a compilation of all of this that we didn't manage in our younger years. So let's make a promise to ourselves that the next set of decades that we've been granted the opportunity to live are going to be us showing up as the better and best versions of ourselves for ourselves. And when we do that for ourselves, we do that for others. You know, here we always say selfish first so we can be selfless later. So this is our selfish time 
trust the process, understand what your body's doing, and, I, and it's just going to be absolutely amazing for you. So I put the comment, uh, the the information to join us for class in the comment section. If you're joining us live, I'm going to ask you really quickly before I start going into the comments, please hit that like button on YouTube and Facebook. Please make sure you're subscribed and followed. This helps us get into the eyes and the ears of the women that we love in our life that need to hear this. Every single day I hear women say, I don't know how you found me. And I say, I know how you found me because someone hit that like button, someone subscribed, someone shared, someone commented, and that helps everything that we're trying to do here, getting this information out to the mass, uh, the masses of women so much easier. So just do me a favor, do that little extra step and hit that like button so that the next woman that I talk to that uh, says, I don't know how I found you. I can say, of course, you know how you found us because D Martinez hit that like button on YouTube and she made this information more accessible to you. Um, and that's how we pay this forward to our friends um, that we're uh, living this amazing life with. Okay, here we go into the comment section. I'm going to warn you guys, I'm going to go through these pretty quickly because I have to be off this call by 1255. So we're going to get through these comments as quickly as possible. Jody, I think it has to do with not feasting well enough going into it 100%, right? Because so many people are teaching that we fasted, therefore we can eat whatever we want. That is in fact not a truth. We fast and then we feast so that we can fast again the next day. So everything we do in our feasting window is to support how we want to look and feel tomorrow. It's not to undo anything. So great thought there, my friend. Deb, yes, struggling today for not feasting well over the weekend. Fantastic, right? So that's a truth that you just figured out from the communication your body is sending you. So now you get to decide how many Mondays you want to feel bad because you didn't make the, a conscious decision to feel a different way on a Monday. Super simple way to get through that. Monica, 20 hour fasting, easy. My issue is when I break my fast, I feel like that's the one meal I can have. I wait to eat again before the four hour window is over, but I'm not hungry. Three hours later, I am. That's because Monica, you're not training your hunger hormones to follow the schedule that you're adapting and you're letting your hunger hormones run the show. You have to balance out your hunger hormones. Once you build those boundaries in, that feasting window is going to be easy peasy for you. But right now, every time your your body's sending you a signal, you're almost like probably panicking. Trust it. And so what if you don't feel hungry? Just fast into the next day. My schedule today is crazy busy. I've got five hours of console calls and, and doing this coaching with you guys. My daughter has back to school night tonight. And I was just sharing with a client of mine, like I could panic right? And eat at 10 o'clock tonight, or I can lean into a longer opportunity to fast. And that's exactly what I'm going to do. I'm going to have my break fast like I usually do. And then I'm going to fast into tomorrow. Everything is going to be okay. It's a better option for me than panicking and going through a drive through at 10 o'clock tonight or eating dinner at 10 o'clock tonight out of fear that I didn't, you know, that I need to eat. No, I'm just going to just lean into the fast. It's going to be great. You get to decide how you think you feel about those things. Norma, any suggestions on how to navigate a social gathering involving meals that aren't close to your window for eating? My window is usually four to eight, but we're meeting with a couple at noon. You, what do you want to do at noon with a couple? Do you want to eat with a couple? Do you want to not eat with a couple? I guarantee you, if you don't decide how you want to show up, you're going to hate either way, eat or not eat. So sit down and figure out, like, are you going to lunch with this couple? And if you consciously accepted the invitation, then go have lunch. And then you just get to adjust when it is you want to go back. You can either fast really long into your next schedule, or you can fast really short into your next schedule. You get to decide all of that and then just make really good food choices so you don't feel bad and then associate feeling bad with the fact that you ate lunch at noon or that you were with friends. Oftentimes where our mind goes to is we're like, oh, see, I ate with friends and now I feel bad. No, you get to make the decision on how you show up. Consciously be there with the people you accepted an invitation with, make really informed food choices and then decide, are you going to fast longer or fast shorter because we do everything in a 24 hour period. So something's always got to give and something's always got to take. Jane, is my metabolism, is my metabolism slows down? I think it's if my metabolism slows down, if I fast 20 hours every day. No, it doesn't. I'll explain in a second. How do I increase my metabolism to be able to lose more weight? Your metabolism will speed up when your body's in balance. So eating 
or fasting is just the tool that we use to get into balance. But your body will start to lose weight when your body is back into hormonal balance. Metabolic flexibility and increasing your metabolism, your burn rate happens when that happens, you're back in balance. So 20 hours, if done correctly and done consistently, and then you're feasting on um, smart food decisions for you and what it is you say that you want for yourself, your body's going to lose weight and your metabolism is, metabolism is going to speed up. Oftentimes, we think fasting is is uh, slowing down our metabolism because you're not fasting. You're just not eating in a 20 hour period. So you have to get into a fasted state. And that's exactly what we teach the very first week inside the intermittent fasting for today's aging woman course. Betty, good, good, uh, good morning or good afternoon. My friend, your name is now ringing a bell because we've had some email conversations. Uh, so happy to have you with us. Kathy, happy Monday, everyone. Happy to continue learning more about fasting with all of you. Yeah, we're happy to have you here. Susan, so much fun to participate live as a graduate July grad. I try to use my last two to three hours of 20 hours for my brain work and gosh, my brain's working so much better now. Yeah, that's because you're in that deep fasted state, right? Your brain is going to just be on fire. Um, which is exactly the opposite of how our brain feels when we're constantly in that fed state, right? Because again, we're having those chemical and hormonal uh, responses. So Susan, go get some work done, my friend. I love it. Marie, good evening, Diane. And to all you fine ladies from Northern Ireland, power up 20 hours. Yes. Today I'm going to be fasting. Well, I'm not going to be fasting. Uh, I'm going to fast like 22 hours, I think today. Um, and then my daughter has back to school night tonight. And so I'm going to have like probably like a snack and maybe my breakfast shake. And then I'm going to go long into tomorrow. I'm super excited about it. Uh, so always leaning into the fast is the way to go. Ashley, happy Monday, my friend Myra. Um, I'm Myra Parham and I just subscribed to your channel. Well, family, welcome. Not too many Parhams that I meet in the world. Um, not my name. It's my married name, my husband's family, but welcome. So good to have some family in the house. Uh, Stoves, seven, six, eight are cats. Why do I get lightheaded after 18 hours? I, there could be a hundred reasons why. Um, if you're inside the intermittent fasting for today's aging woman course, go into the community and ask the question and I'll do my best to answer it and get some more information from you. If you're not into class, get into class and then I can help you there. It's hard for me to tell strangers why they're feeling certain things when I don't know anything about you. Carmen, hello from your August class. Welcome, my friend. Um, Alethea, Alethea. I think I said that right. Aletha, <laughs> I'm in your present class. Your mindset sessions are so helpful. I always need to remind myself what I really desire for myself. Mindful feasting is key. 100%. Our brain tends to forget little details, right? And then we, we blame things that seem convenient. So a lot of people blame the 24, uh, 20 hour fast for why they're gaining weight or their metabolism. They feel like it's slowed down. Or whatever, and it's just because they're not eating for 20 hours and they're really not in a fasted state. So remember that a lot of coaches here on the internet don't teach what a fasted state is. And that's the most important thing, especially for us women. We're having these hormone changes. And remember, hormones ebb and flow. So when one decreases, one increases. And so that's where we are. And um, and that deep fasted state is really where you're going to get the best benefits. Betty, I'm so excited about being in the August class. I've always fasted for spiritual reasons. Fasting 24 is easy for me. Resetting my mind is truly great. I love it. Thank you. Um, Thank you. I'm so on board. Fantastic, my friend. Yes, be on board because a lot of the other things we did didn't really serve us well, right? And so now you get to just go all in on this. And remember, you get to make the rules. Natalie, I've been doing one meal a day with no weight loss for three weeks, lost 24 pounds in a month and a half. So I tried doing two meals for a few days, seeing if I could jump start it again. What could I be doing wrong? Natalie, if you're inside the intermittent fasting for today's Aging Woman course in August, post that question inside of the community group. If you're not, I recommend getting in because you will learn all of this. Um, I don't know enough about you to answer that honestly. Um, so just go back and rethink some of the things you're doing. Brianna, um, or I am Doris. Maybe I am in the August class. I love it. I'm learning a lot. Thank you, Diane. Yeah. Oh, so you are in the August class. Awesome. Love it. And you're learning a lot. Yeah. You know, the thing is we have to really relearn how to take care of ourselves because we have been taught so many things that are now, you know, becoming, um, the truth. Right. Um, and that is that, um, we were duped 
by a lot of scientific studies. This is why I think scientific studies are fantastic, but we have to ask ourselves, how does this apply to me? Uh, who were the people in that group? Can I do this long term? And for a lot of us, it's just like good information to have, but not really how we want to live. And so we were duped with a lot of false scientific data back in the day. So we have to just be okay with that. And for a lot of this, a lot of the nutritional advice and the things that we did to manage weight or body, you know, aesthetics worked because our hormones were working in our favor for that result. And now they're working in a different favor for a different result. So we just got to make some changes. Mary, Started 20 hour um, on July 1st, started 161 down to 153 today. So excited question, is it required to eat a certain amount of calories in the feasting window? I don't teach on calories. Calories are nothing because we have to think about calories in this sense. Everything has a caloric makeup to it and calories do not equal nutrition. So I could eat a candy bar and it's X amount of calories, or I could eat some chicken, some rice, and some broccoli, and that also has a X amount of calories. And I could potentially match those two meals up to be the same caloric value, but they're, they're, they're not the same nutritional makeup, right? And so calories mean nothing when we're really trying to become happy and healthy, like to, to be totally honest with you. So get away from the calorie counting and I, I promise you, your whole world will open up. Marianne, I'm in the August class. Love it. Awesome. Uh, Chris, August class member, learning so very much. Are you going to have a live chat for August class members at, at some point? Thanks for all you do. I do not do it because there's just it's just too hard to manage and everyone gets disappointed because we have women from all over the world and time zones and weekdays and it just doesn't work. So that's why I put inside the course an opportunity for you to book a consult call with me. That would be the best way. And then you get me a hundred percent for the time that we have our call. So I would recommend doing a consult call. Ukob, Ukob, I think so many doctors gave me bad advice about how I should eat. Thank goodness for research helped me focus on how I feel when I eat and how I'm losing weight. 100%. You have to be your own advocate in all things, health and happiness and fitness and all those things, right? Because just because something worked for one person doesn't mean it's going to work for the masses or just because it worked for the masses doesn't mean it's going to work for you, the one person. So you have to be willing to ask a lot of questions. Lauren, in the August class and having so many aha moments. Yes. Reframing how we think about how we take care of ourselves and reframing how we think about what makes us really happy is life changing. So hold on to all those aha moments. I hope you're taking really good notes uh, because something in life is going to make you question it. You're going to go and listen to someone else or something's going to happen to you or something's going to happen to someone in your family and you're going to get a little sidetracked. It happens to all of us. Go back to your aha moments notes for sure. And that'll reaffirm getting back is the best thing for you. Betty, I've been doing 24 and one meal a day. Somebody told me that I need to get at least 1200 calories a day. I don't like counting calories. What do you do if you get if you get full easy. There's a lot in there, my friend. Um, some, I don't know who somebody is, but if you don't like counting calories, why would you do something that someone told you to do that you don't like to do? Like put that in a hundred life scenarios and, and see which one of those makes sense. Just because it's calories and just because it's nutrition doesn't mean that it's going to be the right thing because someone told you to do that. You got to figure that out for yourself. But I don't believe living a life of torture, trying to do something that doesn't make sense for me. Um, and then why do you get full easily? Girlfriend, I teach that in class. So a lot of these questions I could tell are from people who either aren't listening to their lessons in class or aren't in class. There's a reason you don't get full with fasting, and that's explained in the first week of our class. Rebecca, been doing fasting for nearly a year, but just started 20-hour fast. Awesome, girlfriend. I hope you find uh, all the benefits and feel all the benefits from it is a really great place to live. Dr. Six, nine, six, nine, nine. When do you use Organifi green juice? Is it during your fast or your feast? So to be completely honest with you, Organifi green juice is not one of my favorite Organifi products. I like the red juice, the glow and the pure. I use the pure for mental clarity and, um, just kind of helping my brain be DNF, be its best. Um, and I do the, or the, uh, immunity, actually the red juice and the, um, glow. And I do it in my feasting window. 
meowser. Time and consistency is definitely key. I need to remind myself of this a lot. It's true of everything. Anything that you want in your life that's going to be benefiting you and good for you is a long run decision making process. Nothing good lasts in the short run. So consistency over time is the best. Althea, yes, I have put my scale away. It could it can become an obsession. It can become an obsession and it's not a healthy one if you don't have a healthy mindset about what a number means to you as a person. Robin, I'm doing the 20 hour fast and sign up for the September class. I've been doing it one week and have lost f- four pounds. One year ago, I lost 20 pounds doing IF and have maintained, but have 25 more to go. 22 now, right? Actually 21 now, my friend, you have, you lost four pounds and you have 25 to go. That's 21. Uh, I really use the hungry means it works mantra. Yeah. Thanks for your support and inspiration. You're welcome, girlfriend. And I can't wait for you to get into class because I want you to be able to come back here and say that you lost all extra 25 of those pounds and it stayed off. We have a member who lost 29 or 90 pounds a few years ago and she's kept every single pound off. Not because, quote unquote, fasting, but because she changed her mindset and she cre- she changed her lifestyle and fasting is the tool that's helped her stick to those two things. So I can't wait for you to get that last 25 off and then keep it off for sure. Try or tree bow. Uh, this is so good. Re, uh, I think it's reality talk. I think is what you're trying to say. Uh, you're welcome, my friend. Lauren, August class member since fasting, I've developed some food aversions, foods I'd indulge in and couldn't resist just aren't as appealing to me anymore. And I have no problem walking away from them. I love it. Oh, that's because of the, um, I think it's the hormone lesson, right? Where we talk about ghrelin and leptin and uh, and, uh, insulin and our neuropeptides. And when our body's out of balance, we crave things and we see things that we think we need. And when you get all the nutrient, uh, requirements met for your body, then your body gives you a different signal. So I'm glad you're making that connection. Uh, Demery, at least I get to see a live show. Yes, you get to see a live show for sure. Alexis, I take a diuretic and potassium daily is fasting safe for me. I don't know. Um, if your diuretic is doctor prescribed and if you're taking it for blood pressure reasons, you just want to keep your doctor informed about the decisions you're making to change your lifestyle in a healthy way. And then potassium is just a mineral. And so I don't, that shouldn't be anything that should be a problem for you. Um, so you get to decide if it's going to be safe for you. Um, not eating for 20 hours a day and how that's connected to safe or unsafe, I never understand where that happened and that communication came about. But anything that you do with a healthy mindset and you do in in an informed way should always be a safe decision. So I would just say if the diuretic is doctor prescribed, you have to let your doctor know that you are making uh, lifestyle changes. Jill, I watch your YouTube videos all the time. You have helped me tremendously. I'm so happy to hear that, my friend, and I'm glad that they're there for you. There's five years. So you can also see how I have transformed over the five years with consistency over time. And there's plenty of them to watch. So I'm glad that you're finding some value in that. Janie, uh, I disagree about using a scale. I gained 30 pounds, not keeping an eye on my scale. It, I hit menopause and started gaining while eating exactly the same. Now it's really hard getting the weight off. Okay. So your scale didn't do that to you, but you can disagree. I, if you, the scale's your jam, girlfriend, I'm not here to tell you not to use the scale. I'm here to help women let go of the scale if it's not serving them. So not using the scale is not why you gained 30 pounds. The reason you gained 30 pounds is because you were doing all the same things and your body had changed. The same thing happened to me. I have been in the health and wellness business for women since I was in my 20s. I didn't change a thing either. And I also gained a lot of weight when I was transitioning through menopause. And so it hits us like a brick. But the scale has nothing to do with that. Your clothes were probably fitting differently and you didn't make that connection. Your body chemistry was changing. You didn't make that connection as most of us don't because we're not taught that there's a connection that needs to be made. So if the scale serves you, then use the scale. If the scale messes with your brain because you're dropping and gaining ounces or you're connecting the weight on the scale to you doing something bad to yourself, that's not a healthy approach to using a scale. So make sure as long as you're healthy with it, then it's fine. But all those other things that you described had nothing to do with the scale. Because if you would have saw the weight go up, you would have just put yourself in a very unhealthy mindset and probably would have done drastic things to get the number to go down. Julianne 50. I have used food for years as a comfort to avoid feeling emotions that are uncomfortable. 
Right. That's all of us. With your help, I now realize that an emotion only lasts 90 seconds. I'm choosing to wait it out and feel it out. Pause, right? You go pause, you have a glass of water, you go for a little walk around your house or whatever, and the, the, the emotion will be fleeting. The thoughts in your mind will change, and then you make more informed decisions. So Julianne, I am so flipping happy for you, my friend. That's life-changing forever for you. So um, give yourself a little pat on the back for doing that work. Bianca, I did three consecutive days of 20-hour fast just to check if I could do it, and I did it. Now I plan to go get on the November 22 session with you. Love from Pakistan. Yeah, right. That That's the other thing too, is like we put this thought in our brain that, oh, there's no possible way I can go 20 hours without food. There's no possible way I could fast. I heard this. I heard that. I heard it's unsafe, like all the things. So we make the decision without our own proof. So uh, I'm glad you have the proof and I'm glad you're going to be joining us in November. Uh, Laylee, uh, I'm your student. I was your student last month. What you taught is really makes sense. Thanks. You're welcome. Yeah. You know, um, I, I, I'm so proud of the work that we do here to collectively as a community and that we're willing to go against, right. What a lot of people think is the norm and really become outliers in this way that women have the opportunity to take care of ourselves. So lately I'm super happy for you, my friend, Pamela King, August class, so much fun. Once I heard about one ingredient foods in this community, I've come up with so many good recipes. Thank you, Diane, for all your teaching. Yeah. So that's really all a recipe is right. Taking a bunch of things together and you put it, make a concoction and you slap a name on it and making one ingredient food recipes is super fun. And for those of you who want little insight on what I do for my family feast, I don't share my totality of nutrition in a day just isn't something I want to do. Um, but I share a feast every day. Um, and I give you just like a picture and a brief description of what it is. And it's super easy and it's super fun. So I do that on Instagram, ginger 404. Hi, Diane. I'm in the current August 22 class. I'm loving it. I'm still working on my food choices. I have had years of guilt because I'm not a fan of very many veggies, ideas. Oftentimes cooking vegetables in a different way um, can can be all that you need to do, right? So oftentimes we bring these these traditions or, or things that maybe our moms or grandmothers or fathers or whoever was cooking for you did. And we don't like that. Um, overcooked vegetables, in my opinion, are not very tasty. The texture of them changes, the taste of them change. So I would maybe look at cooking in different ways, air fryers, broiling, uh, pan frying, uh, all those kind of things can really change the way vegetables taste. So figure out, is it a consistency thing? Is it a, um, is it um, the fact that the taste actually does change when it's cooked in a different way? Can you season them? You know, those kind of things really do make a difference for sure. Robin, thank you so much. Marie, oh, health has been amazing since going into IF with the consultation of my rheumatologist. I am finally off all RA meds. She has been amazed. Thanks, Diane. Healing from the inside out, right? And your body's picking that hierarchy. Your body said, thank you, Marie, for moving out of the way. Now I can do my job, which is to get rid of all these things that are making you have to go somewhere and get a prescription to control what I'm fully capable of doing as a human body on my own. So your body is thanking you every day, my friend. And now your body's in control and not jet. You're not managing and covering up symptoms with a medicine. You got to the root problem and now you could live a life free of prescription medication. And now I'm sure your doctor sings your glory to other patients and hopefully they'll be able to do the same. Nicole, totally joining September class, have been traveling July and just got home today. Can't wait. Cannot wait to have you. Cannot wait to have you. It's going to be super fun. We have a great group of women already uh, enrolling in class. And so you're going to be with a lot of uh, people probably that you see here. So it's super fun when we all come together inside of class. So that's the link to find out more. It is in the comment section on both YouTube and Facebook. Michelle, I was heavy since I was eight years old. Not sure what I should look like, but I do know I don't like what I see and I don't feel attractive. I did 20 hours for a few days and felt great, but can't stay on it. Michelle, come to class. Come to class. We start September 3rd. Get yourself registered today. If you know in your gut you need to think differently, you need to act differently, you need to make different decisions, you need to feel better about what you see, just joining class with no physique changes is going to make you see yourself in a different light. We have to see ourselves differently in order to show up for ourselves in a different way. And you're going to get all that from class. I would highly recommend jumping on a consult call with me. Once you get in class, all the information is in there and how you can do that too. And then you're with a bunch of other women who are also managing some of the same things. 
And so you're not alone. A lot of us have grown up that way. So you can change all that by just changing how you feel and think about yourself, my friend. And we're here for you. Um, D, wow, that's um, awesome, Marie. Oh, yeah, right. Can you imagine? Like, I'm sure, um, I'm sure when you get prescribed something like that from a rheumatologist, they probably tell you that you have to be on that for the rest of your life. And we know that that is not true either. Plenty of thyroid conditions are also being eliminated and or we uh, and or like um, um, closer to being normal. Like, there's a step down of how much thyroid medication a lot of women who are graduates of this course and in this community are also experiencing. And wouldn't it be nice to just be able to travel around and not have to worry about getting your prescription filled or whatever? Like, it's so freeing for sure. Uh, Demery, Demery. Demory. I'm eating what I can on the days that I eat. I'm doing alternate day fasting, but then I'm worried that I'm not eating enough. Maybe I'm just worrying too much. I feel fine. Yeah. I don't like alternate day fasting for me because of that right there. I don't like wondering one day to the next. I just like a consistent routine of consistency over time. I fast for 20 hours. I feast for four. I go have lunch. I fast for less. I make it up on the other end, or I just have a full day of eating. Like I don't like that specific of a routine. It just doesn't work for me. And maybe you can think about that for two. Maybe it's just not working for you just because it's working for someone else or someone's promoting it doesn't mean it's for you. The same thing with the 20 hour fast, play with some things, figure out what's working for you. And so good to hear Marie. I'm hoping to get off arthritis meds too. Remember arthritis is often, it's an autoimmune disorder, right? And it's often um, connected to inflammation in our joints. And so I wish my grandmother was alive today. I know I could help her as well. She suffered from arthritis. And so I just figured I was going to have arthritis at some point too. And she had it very early on. Um, and I don't suffer from anything. And I'm hoping that this lifestyle is going to keep making, uh, that so for me and the life that I'm living. So keep up the work, keep trusting that your body knows what to do. If you get out of the way, this is the relationship. I think most of us need to work on right here. Trust your body. You've been controlling it for a really long time and it's ready for your bodies to start running the show. Nicole, I'm totally signing up. Thanks. Hello to all you women. Yeah. Sign up. It's so fun. I'm a, I, I show up in class the same way I show up here. I do not let you guys fool yourselves. I make you, I make you become very honest with yourself. I make you go back and rethink some things that you post in class because this is the time for us to really, really get what we deserve. And so, um, I ask you to show up ready for that. It's, it's life changing. Tracy, if I am taking multivitamins, probiotic, prebiotics, do I still need the minerals in my water? I don't know. Cause I don't know what's in that. Uh, so you have to just do a little scan of some of the minerals that are there. And if you feel like you're getting enough, you're probably getting enough. GD. Hey, Diane, thanks for all the great information. I love that you say to stay off the scale yet. Most of the women in your course that are here giving testimonials all mention the weight loss. Yeah, because Here's, here's when the scale is good. When you need to prove, it's like any other monitoring device. When you need to prove that what you're doing is working, I think the scale is great validation, but you have to be okay with the mindset that that takes. When you step on a scale to prove that what you're doing is bad, that's not what the scale is designed to do. So if you have a healthy relationship with the scale, the scale can be an amazing tool. But if you're using the scale to judge how bad you are, how you're failing, it's not working, I might as well just throw in the towel. Like if it's the mindset aspect of the scale that really does help, right? And what here's another thing that I say, if you know, and this is this has been proven by many women that I've helped coach. If you go down a clothing size, your clothes are feeling better and you're like sizing down, that's generally around 10 pounds. So you can just say, I would feel confident saying, yeah, I just moved down to my next smaller size jeans. And I think I lost about 10 pounds. Like That's a pretty accurate statement. Could be even more weight. So the scale and weight is how you, the individual woman, manage that and deal with that in your own mindset. Because the scale itself is not bad. It's just a misused tool, like food. Um, Robin, I'm in the August class and it's helping me immensely. Thank you, Diane. You're welcome. Uh, and I lost 20 pounds painlessly with intermittent fasting. For me, usually 16, 8, going to insert some 24. Yeah, only if you feel like you need to, right? So if you're getting all the results that you want with the 16, 
then you don't need to bump it up. But if you're like, "Mm, maybe I can have some health benefits or I'm having some foggy brain, maybe it can clear up my brain a little bit and just go there and see what happens because not everything is weight related. Nicole, in August class, yes, I want future me to feel so thankful for the choices present me is making. Mm Mm-hmm. Right? Wouldn't that be? Wouldn't that be cool? Like we can we can sit here today and just forgive the past too, right? Like, hey, girl, you did the best that you could. You did the best with the information you had available at the time. You know, everything worked well for you then. It's totally okay. Today, things are just going to be different, and I want the next twenty years for me to be able to look back to today and see me sitting here and go, girl, you were doing a great job. Like, thank you for setting me up for success. Like, think about the conversation you want that 20-year-old woman to have with a girl that, or the woman that's sitting here today, right? And I want my 20-year-older woman to look back at the woman that's sitting here and say, thank you. That's what I, that's the conversation I'm hoping for. Tracy, if I'm taking multivitamin, okay, I already think that I did that one. Um, I keep blowing a three on Lumen. Ah, come Friday to Instagram. So blowing a three on a lumen, in my opinion, is not a bad thing. We just got to figure out what time of the day, what kind of decisions you're making, what other aspects of your life are going on. So come to the Instagram live on Friday at 1 p.m. Central Standard Time. Come live with me and I'll coach you through it, my friend. Not a bad thing. Uh, Tobe, Anita, I love to live this way. I couldn't do it without the course and my group. Yes, we need support. We need to know we're not alone. We need someone to, you know, bring us back to center when our brain starts to get a little bit out of control happens to all of us happens to all of us community is amazing anita the best thing i've done for myself was to stop and listen when i found one of your videos the second best thing was not hesitating to sign up for the august class the support the insight and the encouragement are all worth the investment in self thank you for saying that and yes an investment in you when you show up and do the work is the best investment you could ever make and it will pay you forward time and time again. So Anita, I'm glad that you made those connections and I'm glad you stopped and listened. You have to be open to listen too. So I'm glad you were open to listen. Marie, uh, wonderful D Martinez. Trace, July IF grad doing really well, but I find I need support to continue in my success. Not strong enough to do it on my own yet. Should I join the mindset course? You should have joined the mindset course. You'd already be in it, my friend. Um, So yeah, because we all need reinforcement. Like here's, this is my accountability, right? Like I got to show up and I, and help these women. And I can't help women who are looking for a better future self if I'm not modeling that for myself. So I love what I get to do every day. It keeps me in check, right? And so I also love the mindset shift course for that same thing, because I can get off track myself. I have coaches in my own life that I lean into to keep me straight. I have books that I read. I have all kinds of things. So we're not meant to do this alone, right? And we we have a human brain that is not trained to serve us well, unless we train our brain to serve us well. So I would say get into the class. I'm going to open it back up for our August uh, IF people to have an opportunity to jump in with us for the rest of the year. So um, email me and let me know that you're interested. So I make sure that you get an invite. Brenda, I only lost five pounds and have been doing IF 24 for a week and a half, but I'm feeling discouraged. Is that five pounds of weight loss normal to say I only been fasting for over a week? You need to just, you need to remove the words that aren't serving you. I only lost five pounds in a week. I don't know. Like I'd be happy to lose five pounds in a week. Who's not happy? How much weight do you want to lose in a week? What did you do to lose the five pounds? Was it desperate? Was it restrictive? Was it fun? Like you have to answer all those questions for yourself. And what five pounds in a week, people would like love to lose five pounds in a week. So you're putting a lot of limiting words in there that are discouraging your brain. So there's no such thing as a normal weight loss. It's the weight that your body has decided to lose based on the decisions you made and the hierarchy of healing that's taking place on the inside. Um, so I would jump into class with us, my friend, we could work on a lot of that. Idaho, Jesse, this morning, my husband came to me with four grape tomatoes from our garden. I popped them in my mouth without thinking Then I thought, Oh no, I'm fasting. You know, enjoy the tomatoes. Tomatoes aren't going to be the thing that's going to stop you from having everything you want for the next 50 years. They're just one incident in one day. How your brain handles it, how your body reacts to you thinking something and feeling something is going to determine how tomorrow is going to go. So you just enjoy those tomatoes. You go right back into your fast. You break your fast on schedule. You start tomorrow all over. And thank your husband for the tomatoes. How lovely that you have a garden. Louise, August student here. Absolutely the best thing I've ever done for myself. I've already lost over eight pounds, but more importantly, I feel better than I have in 20, 
uh, in years. Yeah, it's way easier for sure. Yeah, get into the September class. Rhonda, I finally caught you currently in August class. I'm doing the fast fine, but I don't fast on weekends and I feel guilty when I'm not fasting. I need balance. I do breakfast with my son on Saturday. You get to decide why you have guilt around eating breakfast with your family. And how was your, if you told your son, hey, I'm going to eat breakfast with you, but you make me feel really guilty that I'm sitting here with you eating breakfast and imagine what his face is going to look like and then reframe your thought around that. Joanna, good advice. Awesome. Marie O. Oh. Okay, let's see. Okay, I got to get through these really quick. I uh, spent my weekend planning for my feast to make sure I have things ready to go and support my next fast. The mind shift has been critical. Yeah, exactly. Grateful, thankful, blessed. I decided to do, I decided to do you class. I'm so excited. Are your classes on Saturdays? There's nothing live. Everything's pre recorded. We start on a Saturday and we go for three weeks of daily lessons and a week of extra support after that. So super easy and enjoy Sunday breakfast with my family. The only change it's the only change I made. Yeah, you can have breakfast for sure. Um, all thumbs. I often add pickle juice or apple cider vinegar to my feasting, my fasting green tea drink. Someone told me eating a dill pickle is not breaking a fast. I don't know. I wouldn't eat one. Uh, Lisa new here. I found you. Yes. Make sure you're following, hit that follow and that notification over on Facebook. So you'll know when we go live and stuff, Esther, I found you 2017, lost seven kilos and kept it off ever since. Love your lives. Love your love from Amsterdam, the Netherlands. There you go. So there you go. There's another person who's left lost weight and kept it off since 2017. What diet community has those kind of testimonials, right? Uh, kept it off since 2017. Uh, great to catch you live. I have a question about overeating after the fast. How do I control my portions after the fast? That is taught in class. If you're in class, we're doing the feasting this week. If not, jump into the next class. Uh, Myra, you're welcome. In August class, I'm loving it. Love it, love it, love it. Um, I didn't think it, it would be possible, but watching Diane's videos made me realize that the body has to have time to heal itself and fasting long has got me there. Yeah, 100% consistency over time. Your body does not want to be sick. I've done the 20 hour fast, but losing weight is not my issue. Long-term could be the daily 20 hour fast. Help re regulate my blood pressure. I'm willing. Yeah, for sure. Because your body doesn't want to have high blood pressure either. I would like to recommend my weight, emotional eating clients, take your classes. I treat weight and hormone issues with acupuncture, alternative treatments. Well, there you go. Testimonial from someone who's in this industry saying to take the class. So thank you very much, uh, Juanita. I love it. Um, okay, so I got to get through this. I'm going to see if I can find anything with a question mark. January 22, glad, grad, Sandy, good to have you. August class, I've been really enjoying exploring different foods. Are there any other questions? I will be out of town for most Saturdays in September. Should I sign up for the October class? Yeah, but Saturdays are only one lesson. We go Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. It's a lesson every day. So if Saturday is the only problem, I say don't wait, jump in in September. Um, can we call it shrink week when the scale doesn't move. <laughs> That's funny. Um, let's see. Let's see. Have you ever thought about having a retreat? Yes. I, uh, I've thought about that, but I'm just not in a season of my life where it would be feasible for me because I still have a young daughter at home. So maybe when I'm uh, an empty nester, we can think about something like that. Um, needed this live. Awesome. First time here. I'm so excited. Awesome. I love it. Make sure you subscribe. Um, already lost 13 pounds since July 20th. That's fantastic. You know, the reason we talk about weight a lot here, even though I say stay off the scale is because weight loss is what really excites people. And then when we back up or maybe like back into weight loss and how we get to weight loss with the hierarchy of healing and the consistency over time, then being on a scale and losing weight, we have a different frame of reference for it. So what I always recommend with the scale thing is stay away from it if it's not serving you. That's it. And if you find that you have now a healthy relationship with the scale, then then it's fine. Then you can get on it all you want. Uh, Blanche, new to your channel. I've been trying 20-hour fast and learning to love it. I'm animal based diet. Will my class, will your class work for me? I do not tell anyone how to eat. So you eat, if you're um, animal based, you eat animal based. I don't tell you how to eat. I tell you how to think when you eat. And I, I, and I ask you to consider why you're eating. That's the, the biggest thing. Okay. I am going to jump off because I have consult calls booked all day. So I got to go jump on a consult call with my next client. If you have something that wasn't addressed in the comment section and you would like me to address it when I pop off of here, go into the comment section of the YouTube 
page or the Facebook page. And I promise you, I will come back around today and make sure everyone gets touched and gets recognized in our community. But I do have to jump off. We've been on for an hour. If you haven't jumped into class, get into class. I will come back to the comment section, like I said. So leave your comments. Just copy them, paste them, put them over there, and I will catch you guys later today. Have a great Monday. I will see you guys back here on Thursday at noon Central Standard Time. Tomorrow on Instagram, make sure you follow me on Instagram. We're going to do a good talk over there as well. Have a good day.